probably brings up why are we studying these Bode plots? Good question. We'll try to answer it today. So we've been looking at all these stability and sorry, we're going to look at stability and we're going to look at the Bode plot to do it. If we already know the transfer function, why would we want to make this Bode plot? Well, one reason is that actually in a real system we may not know the actual transfer function. So we can model systems, right, and we can do the math behind them and we can approximate all these different things and figure out the poles. But sometimes you have a very complex system and you don't actually know what it's, you can try to model it but you might not get a very precise model. But what you can do is put a frequency into that system like a Bode plot, so put a bunch of different frequencies and see how the output, the magnitude, and the phase shift, how they're changed for each frequency. So that's something we can physically measure in a system. And so we're doing these methods to kind of understand if we just have the Bode plot, say, can we figure out anything about the stability? And this is all for an open loop system, so if we have the feedback loop here, and we're looking at G of S, so actually, this is our this is called unity feedback. So we're just directly putting the feedback. We're measuring just the system, G of S, looking at a Spody plot, and we want to see when we connect it with unity feedback, will it be stable? So if we can't actually figure out this exact plot, we can measure it in real life, get a Bode plot, and then we can figure out if this system will be stable or not once we put feedback on it. And to do that, we need to define some terms. And so, based on this example Bode plot I've drawn here, we're going to define a few terms. First one is called the crossover frequency. Which we sometimes just call with an omega C for crossover. And this is, how do I write it? I'm going to write it this way the frequency, so where the value of omega c here, where remember this is putting it into the Bode plot, doing the frequency response, the magnitude is exactly equal to zero. So if we look at, here's an example Bode plot I have drawn, and what we have to do is essentially see where, and this is in db, so it's one, unity, if we look at 0 dB, we pretty much track this point, find it's approximately here. We can approximately say that's around 2-ish. So this is our omega C. Well, we'll just label it with omega C. All right, so that would be our crossover frequency. Okay? And well, actually, I'll draw this. There you go, so you can see that more clearly. So that's the point. That's our crossover frequency. And Based on that crossover frequency, we define another term called phase margin. Which is the angle of the crossover frequency. And I write it like this, so 100 and plus 180. It's how far away this is, how far above negative 180 this value is. So let me show you on this graph, it'll make more sense. So if this is a crossover frequency, so I'm going to follow that down, there's a corresponding crossover frequency over here. If we look at the approximate phase, say it's maybe negative 165, I'm just guessing, degrees, it's the difference between that point and negative 180. And so when you do the math out, it would be negative 65 plus 180. So it's going to be a positive 15 degrees. So that would be this distance. Oh, this is the phase margin. So here would be approximately 15 degrees of phase margin. Okay. And the last thing we're going to define is called gain margin. Okay, and this is once we hit 180, so we have to find the 180 point, we look at the, so it's approximately here, 
we look at, it's the gain needed, this would be gain margin, needed at the point where you hit 180 in the phase, the gain that would make this point exactly equal to 0 dB, to unity. So gain margin is the gain needed to increase gain to 0 dB when phase is negative 180 degrees. Okay, so here it would be approximately if we're maybe about negative 20 degrees, our gain margin here would be about 20 dB. Okay, so these are in the important terms, cost over frequency, this point when the dB is zero, from that same point we can find the phase margin, so it's essentially how far away is your operating point, the point that you're at, at the crossover frequency, how far away is that from negative 180, and then the gain margin is once you hit 180, how much could you increase what you need to increase to make it exactly one. So now that we've talked about the, these basic things, crossover frequency, phase margin, and gain margin, and by the way, I changed this to magnitude rather than gain since it, it just makes it clearer. So this is the gain needed to increase the magnitude to zero dB when the phase is negative 180. And this relates to stability in that if we look at the closed loop transfer function, so here we are looking at the response, frequency response for G, once we put that in a unity negative feedback, right, so some, we know this value, we put it into a negative feedback, we get this as a closed loop tra transfer function. If we want to look for the bounded input, bounded output stability of this system, we will notice that if this value gets to a negative one, meaning that negative one corresponds right to the phase of negative 180 right here, and a gain of one, which is zero dB, then we'll have a problem because our denominator will be essentially zero, which will be infinitely large. And so for some frequency, we'll have an infinitely large output which means that it's not bounded input, bounded output, stable, right? It's not a bounded signal that goes up into infinity. So we are essentially using these measurements to see how close we're getting to this negative one. And if we cross this negative one, if we have at negative 180, when we hit that 100, negative 180, if we have a gain above zero, so above zero dB, above one, then our system will not be stable, will not be bounded input, bounded output stable. So we look for these things to see how much of a margin we have from being unstable. And in some systems, you may want to have a certain phase margin to, so that it reacts more quickly to you know, transient, but we use these values to see how close we are to this negative one value, which is instability. Okay? So these, you know how to find them, and if these, if at negative 180 you are less than, your magnitude is less than zero, you have a stable system. Okay, so that's a really basic explanation. Um, this is worth thinking about if you really want to understand how these systems work. I recommend reading up on Nyquist stability. That's linked to this and it will make more sense. I won't be covering it in the class this time for the introduction class. So. Keep reading, there's lots of good resources out there, and I hope you can get a sense for how stability works based on the Bode plot of a open loop system.